Welcome to another Electronics and More video. In today's video, we will be taking a close look at an automotive starter. I will show you how the starter works, how to test the starter, and fully disassemble the starter to show you what the internal components look like. The starter that you're looking at was removed from a Hyundai. The starter had an intermittent problem with the brushes losing contact with the armature, but it will still work just fine for this video. This half over here, which is larger in diameter, is the starter motor, and the smaller diameter component is the starter solenoid. Take a look over here, and you can see the starter gear right here. There is a disc that's located right behind the starter gear. It's right here. And there's a little rod or an arm that pushes behind this disc. And when it does push, it slides the gear forward. When the gear slides forward, it makes contact with the flywheel on the engine, allowing the flywheel to turn. Looking at it from the end, you can see a very large copper wire coming from the starter motor's brushes connecting to the left terminal of the solenoid. The right terminal of the solenoid would be connected to the battery positive. The job of the solenoid is to close the circuit between these two terminals, allowing the starter to power up. When 12 volts is present at this terminal right here, what happens? The windings inside the solenoid become energized and there is a plunger inside the solenoid which pulls this direction, and when it does push this direction, it closes the circuit between the two terminals, allowing current to flow into the starter, but at the same time, it also pushes the starter gear all the way to the end. The gear you're looking at here will push all the way forward. There are a few problems which you may experience with a starter. If you go to start the vehicle up and it does not start, the first thing you would want to do is make sure you have an alarm system that's not causing the problem. If you're certain the alarm system is not the problem, then what you're going to do is take a digital meter, like you see here. You're going to set it for a DC voltage range higher than 12 and a half volts. You will take the red probe and a jumper wire like that. Take the other end of the jumper wire connect it onto that terminal with the wire connected. Make sure you leave that wire connected on that terminal. Take the black probe, connect the jumper wire as shown, and then you're going to take that and connect it to an engine ground. You can even connect it to the cover like that, as long as it's not painted. If there is paint there, scrape it off with a screwdriver or move it to a different screw where there's no paint. You will then go into the vehicle while somebody is watching the digital meter and you're going to crank the engine over. If you have around 12 and a half volts being detected while you're cranking the engine, then that would mean there's a problem with your starter or the solenoid. If you do not have voltage being detected at that blade, then you may have a problem with your alarm system preventing the engine from starting. You may have a problem with the starter relay on your vehicle, which is located inside a fuse box, either under your hood or under your dashboard. You may also have a problem with a neutral safety switch or a park switch on your gear shifter in your vehicle. The engine will not start unless it's in the park position. It will be a switch which is located either on the transmission next to the linkage or by the gear shifter itself. Manual transmissions have a switch on the clutch pedal or manual transmission which tells the starter that the clutch pedal has been depressed before starting the engine. If either of those switches are faulty on an automatic transmission or a manual transmission, then you can expect no voltage to be present at that terminal when you crank. Since there are many different makes and models of vehicles, 
you're going to have to do an internet search for your make and model vehicle to discover what switch is used and where it is located so you will be able to test that switch. There is also the possibility, but it is much less likely, that the position on the key switch, when you put it to on, and then you go to crank by holding it in the momentary position and then releasing, that could be faulty. Testing the ignition switch is very simple. As long as you have an assistant, one person can turn the key to the cranking position while another person is underneath the dash with a 12 volt test light probing the back side of the key switch. You do one terminal at a time until you find the one that goes on and off with the key switch. If you do not find any that turn on and off with the key switch, but there is power to the other terminals on the key switch, then it's very likely the key switch is faulty. The next thing I'm going to do is apply voltage and demonstrate how it works and you'll be able to see the gear going in and out and then we're going to disassemble everything. All right, I have the wires connected, the ground. Over here, you can see this would be the positive from the battery. And I'm going to apply 12 volts to the solenoid terminal and demonstrate. Let me angle the starter in this direction so you can see the gear as it pops in and out. Here we go. And as you saw, the gear pushed all the way forward to where it stopped against that bushing, and that is where it would have engaged with the flywheel to turn the engine over. I'm going to remove the solenoid first. Once it's removed, I'm going to come right back and show you what it looks like up close and how it operates. Over here, you can see what I'm talking about. This grabs onto another piece, which I'll show you in a minute but it's always in the extended position until voltage is applied and then this spring-loaded center piece will be pulled all the way in tight. You see the spring inside. To demonstrate what I'll do is I'll take the ground and I'll touch it to the side, connect that there, and here we go. and you can see it works very well. You can also measure between the body of the solenoid and that terminal using a digital multimeter. You would do a resistance reading, you could place the meter on a low setting. In my case it'll be around 200 ohms. All right. Turn that so it doesn't reflect so much in the camera. And you're going to measure between the body and the terminal. Scratch it good. Right around 1.3 ohms. That value will vary from solenoid to solenoid, but it's usually a very low value. The best way to test the solenoid is exactly as I showed you a minute ago. Apply voltage and make sure it pulls inward. When you perform the battery test on the solenoid, when the inside pulls down nice and tight, you should have continuity between the two terminals. If you do not have continuity between these two terminals, when this pulls down, that would indicate the contacts inside this cover, which you cannot access, are burned, arced, and no longer making good contact to supply power to the starter motor. If you do have continuity across these terminals, but the starter motor does not power up, that would indicate a problem between the starter brushes and the commutator of the armature in the starter. Now on top, you can see this little post in there. You can see it connects right here. It actually goes in, behind, and it pushes up and down like that. You can see the starter. When I pull down on that using this, the gear extends when I pull down, just like voltage is being applied to the solenoid. When there's no more voltage, it will be pushed back with the spring to the lower setting.
I do want to show you one thing that's important on a starter. And I'm going to have to take a picture of it because it's going to be very hard for you to see on camera. If you look at the gear, you see there's a bevel on that side. There's a bevel on that side. There is no bevel on this side. And actually, I'm looking in the camera now, and I could see that you can see that, so I don't have to take a picture. But there is a bevel all the way around, and that tells you the rotation of the starter. When I worked on inboard boats, there was a left hand and a right hand starter, and you could tell by looking at the bevel, and one will be beveled on that side, and the other would have a bevel on this side. This one, when you fire it up, will rotate clockwise when it's powered, and that's where the bevel is on the left side of the teeth. If the bevel was on the right side of the teeth over here, what would happen? It would rotate counterclockwise when power is applied. Let's open up the starter and see what is inside. And this is a look at the brush holder on the end cap of the motor. This one here and this one here is connected to ground on the starter or engine ground. These two right here are 12 volt positive. So you can see the 12 volts is fed into two different areas of the commutator on the starter motor. This commutator was dirty when I removed it. I took some carburetor cleaner, sprayed it all the way around, wiped it clean, took some fine emery cloth, polished it up, and then I took a toothbrush with more carburetor cleaner to ensure there's nothing trapped between the slots. When the brushes become worn, they do not extend as far to be able to reach the commutator so power is not transferred into the armature and that is why sometimes you have to tap on the starter to get the brushes to make contact for the starter to start up. If your brushes are worn, you do not have to replace the entire starter. You could slide out the assembly and just replace that. Almost all the time, if the solenoid is working properly, but the starter does not operate, it is because the brushes are no longer making contact. So you have positive there. Directly across is negative. Positive here, directly across negative. Ordinarily, I would show you how to test the armature, but starter motors use such heavy copper wire. This looks like around 14 gauge that they almost never fail. The one test you can do is set your digital meter on a 10 meg ohm scale or higher. Check from the center of the armature right there to each one of the spaces on the commutator. You should see no reading on the meter. If you do, that means Current is making it from one of these strips to the shaft, and you would have to replace the entire starter. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also, be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.